young man who joins another club of black people who will not be able to grow up with their fathers. My Lord. And so I'm asking you to do something a little bit different today. Mm. They want us to go out in the streets and they want us to get mad and they want us to chant and march because they know in seven, 10 days, we got to go back home. Mm -hmm. And it's going to happen all over again. It does not make sense that the North Carolina State Legislature can hide videos yeah. like this when all we know is that sunshine is the best disinfectant. Amen. Amen. And so I just want to see the video this morning. Y'all got me off my schedule. <laughs> the sheriff told me at 1130 I could see the video and it's past that and I like to stay on a regiment. So I ask you all to just be patient a little bit more because the truth is going to come forth. Yeah, right. But while we are out here, I need you to get on the phones. Come on. And I want you to go ahead and call Joe and Kirsten. I want you to call every Republican senator or Democratic senator and make sure that they're passing policy so that these families don't have to be here like this. Yep. I'm standing with Gwen Carr behind me. I never thought I'd be doing that. The mother of Eric Gardner is here. Only in black communities do we have mothers of people who lost their children due to gun violence. No other community has a club like that, but we do. And so today I ask you all to think a little bit differently about how we're going to break this cycle. We're going to destroy this system and we're going to reimagine what it should be so we don't have no more deaths like this. And the first step, Mr. Sheriff, is simply do one thing. Show us the video. Yes, we have. Right. We don't need to say the yeah. video. And we won't have the family address you all until after they see the video. And, and it is troubling. It's very troubling that we have to go through this just to achieve simple justice. I can't imagine how many of these Roland Martin and us have been through the fact that the taxpayers have paid all this money right. for the police to be retrofitted with body camera video and then the time when it's most critically needed they won't show it to the public why did the taxpayers pay the money and so Bakari is saying federally we also should be acting here in North Carolina to say it shouldn't be a judge that has to sign for us to see a video that we've already paid our tax dollars to see the video. That's asinine. So what we have to do is continue to be strategic. We have to literally vote the people in office who are going to say we want our children to be able to live out the fulfillment of their destiny that God has for them and not to be shot in the back. I mean, the most cowardly thing in the world you can do is shoot somebody in the back. They don't shoot white men in the back, but it's almost like a cliche where people in the black community, whether it's Jacob Blake in Kenosha, whether it's uh, Laquan McDonald in Chicago, whether it's Walter Scott in South Carolina, whether it's Terrence Crutcher in Oklahoma. I mean, they shoot us in the back as if the most dangerous thing in the world to a police officer is a black man running away. They don't shoot these mass murderers, these young white men who are confirmed mass murderers. I mean, when you think about the Parkland school shooting. I mean, they took him alive after he shot up the whole school. You think about the young man who went and shot up the people in the Asian spa in Atlanta. They took him alive, Arthur. And then, my Lord, not too far from here in Bakari's home state, you know, this young white boy named Dylan Roof went and shot up uh, the whole church and literally they chased him across state lines into North Carolina, and they not only took him alive, but they took him to Burger King to get a burger and a fry. But Andrew Brown, they shoot him in the back, and we gonna see the video to know what they trying to hide from all of y'all, because the truth can't hide forever, and a lie cannot live forever. I gave y'all an assignment, so I wanted to follow through. I need everybody to take their phones out. I know y'all filming, but take it out. We're going to do something good. I, I got Joe Manchin's number right here. It's 202-224-3954. 202-224-3954. Call his office and tell him we tired of black folk dying. And then Kirsten Cinema's number is 202. Say the number one more time for Joe Manchin. Okay. 202 
224-3954. And Kirsten Cinema is 202-224-4521. And just call the office and tell them how you feel. Let me turn it over to Harry. Harry has an update for you. All right, so let me be clear. Uh, we had this thing set up. Uh, when I say we, the family, the attorneys, uh, with the, the uh, county attorney, Mike Cox. Uh, 1130 was the time. Right. It was on the 24th. The only issue we had, like I said before, who was going to see the video. Right. We cleared that issue. Right. Cleared it. Per the statute, we cleared it. 1029 this morning, an hour before the viewing, I get an email. Mm -hmm. Harry, I'm getting ready to do a press release. Y'all see a press release? Have y'all seen a press release from me? Yeah. No. No. Harry, ready to do a press release that the video is having some redactions performed. Oh, no. It will not be ready at 1130. Oh, no. We are working on it hard as we can, wow. but it takes time. Oh, this intent to have it done by the day. They had 24 hours. 20, 48 hours, and it still ain't done. They didn't see this video since Wednesday, April the 21st, to make that decision, do the redactions. Show us to take the family should see the, so the family should not have be subject to any redactions. Why, yeah, why they, do they, have to do redactions? they should see the video raw, raw. I was told by the district attorney, I was told by the district attorney that the family would get to see the raw footage not the redacted version. Right. These right. county administrators are walking back the promises they are made. Right. Show the tape. If you ain't got nothing to hide, show the tape. Right. You, you all know what's very profound? I bet you if that video show Andrew doing something wrong, they would have no problem showing that video. Yeah, but on right. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. But, but it only seems to be when the video has the police doing something wrong, yep. then they got to redact it. Then they don't want to show it. We, we have to always, when we get a chance, speak truth to power. So we can't do it alone. We need all of y'all speaking truth to power for our children. Because the other thing that is profound, this is Khalil. Khalil is the son of Andrew Brown Jr. Now, you all may have noticed that they released uh, a warrant saying all kind of things about Andrew Brown, but they want to redact the face of the police officers that killed Andrew Brown. Now, Andrew Brown didn't kill nobody. The police killed Andrew Brown, but we're going to protect them and not show their face and not say their names so we can see what their rap sheet is. Because all they want to do is assassinate the character of his father. And we want to say, no, no. We want to know what was the character of the killers. Say his name. Andrew Brown. 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 I told you we were going to need you. Andrew Brown. Say his name. Andrew Brown. Say his name. Greetings, I am Keith Rivers, president of the Pasquotank County Branch of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, as well as the third vice president of the North Carolina State Conference of the NAACP. And we will continue to demand justice. We will continue to march. We will continue to have peaceful protests. We will continue to stand for the Brown family and this community. It is. It is almost disgraceful that it has taken the presence of the media to, re to get a, a notice uh, on the, from the Sheriff's Department to release the video 
and now we're understanding that you don't want to release the video in its entirety. You don't want to be transparent, but you want to say that, tell, ask the community to trust you. Well, we can't trust you if you're not transparent. We have to heal, we have to grow. Sheriff Wooten, do the right thing. Wombly, the DA, do the right thing. We will continue and let it be known that this community has now, the city has declared a state of emergency and it has been through peaceful protests. Peaceful protests. That is a reflection of this community, the people that are elected to office. We elected the sheriff. We elected the district attorney. We elected you. Do not fail this community. Do not fail this community. To all of the protesters, to all of the community out here, let the entire United States of America hear you. What do we want? Justice. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. Who do we want it for? Andrew Brown. Who do we want it for? Andrew Brown. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we have the daughter one of the children of Andrew Brown here. And if you ever want to remember what we're fighting for, you just look at that little angel. Um, right now, we're going to have somebody address you who is part of that fraternity that nobody wants to be part of, as Bakari and Harry talked about. She was with the family of George Floyd, she was with the family of Michael Brown. She was with the family of Breonna Taylor. She has been a, a shoulder for them to lean on. She has been a common force for them and for all of us. She's one of the original mothers of the movement and she did not think it robbery. Elizabeth City, to come down and be with the family of Andrew Brown. She is the mother of Eric Gardner, the first I Can't Breathe case in Staten Island, New York, before George Floyd said, I can't breathe. Y'all, let's welcome the mother of the movement, the mother of Eric Gardner, Miss Gwen Carr. first in my life. And I thank you all for standing up for justice. This is what we must do. Everybody has to stand for justice. We have to gather like this. I'm tired. I'm tired of coming to these commem commemorations for black men being shot. to the media. 
But this is our lives. We have oh, to yeah. live this right. each and every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As they say, all police officers isn't bad. All black and browns isn't criminals. Yeah. Yeah. But we have to treat the, the situation as it is. And I am so so I give my family this, my sympathy, my love, and I stand with you, as all of you do. And we have to keep on standing together. We can't go home and just sit on our couch. We have to stay woke, people. Thank you so much. Thank you. You know, y'all, during George Floyd, people wrote and called us from all over the world saying, until we get justice for George Floyd, none of us can breathe. I think while we got Ms. Carr here, we should remind the powers that be that we can't breathe until we get transparency. We can't breathe. 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 Thank y'all. We want Miss Gwen Carter to know that we still remember her son Eric Gardner never got his day in court. And we still fighting for justice for Eric Gardner as well. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we got a uh Another update from the county. They say they're getting real close. So Y'all keep the pressure on. Keep the pressure on. Keep the pressure. When I say we're black lives under attack, what do you do? You say stand up, fight back. When black lives are under attack, what do you do? Stand up, fight back. 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 What do you do? Hey guys, we're gonna we're gonna take the family. We're gonna take the family. We will be back. We're getting real close and we'll reconvene after we see this video. Say his name. Andrew Brown. Say his name. Andrew Brown.